All right, let's go ahead and start. All right, this is what we're going to do today. Um, I'll kind of briefly review over what we did yesterday. And I'm just going to do it briefly because we'll have a full review later, okay? We're going to finish up the chapter is really the, main, the first part we're going to do. Uh, when we finish up the chapter, then we'll start the review for 7 and 8. I had a request for a few of the sapling homework problems, which is fine because it, they cover 7, because 7 was what they were asking for. Uh, so we'll go over 7 and 8 for the review. And at some point, probably what we'll do, the last kind of 10 minutes of class, we have to stop, take a break. You have to review me, OK? I know. So I'll give you an extra good review today, right? Um, and I requested the vodcast go an extra hour long. I don't know how long the, vo uh, the review is going to last, but just in case, we have an extra hour if we need it, OK? So we will quickly review it right now and then finish up chapter 8. So, Oh, and let me change that, or um, I'll change it here in a minute. I'll do break, I'll change it. It's due Friday, not today. Okay, so reviewing this really quick, we have this one right here. What goes over the double bond? What are we adding? H and CL, because that's what's over the arrow, right? Is this Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Makarnikov. So then that means what? The chlorine will go to which side? The larger side, the left. OK, what about this one? What are we adding over the double bond? H and CL. Will this be Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Anti, so now the CL will go to the right. Uh, this one, or you could put H3O where what goes over the double bond? H and OH. Is this Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Makarnikov. Are there rearrangements? Yes. yes. So what do you form in the mechanism? Carbocation. And, okay. What about this one here with the mercury? What are we adding across? H and OH, Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Makarnikov is no peroxide. Um, how does this add? We're going to add the specific way. We're going to look at the wedges and dashes. It adds anti, meaning if one's on a wedge, the other one's on a dash. What about this one here? Anti-Makarnikov. And what are we adding across the double bond? Not a B. H and OH. And how do they add? Sin, meaning the same. So if one's on a wedge, the other's on a wedge. BR2, what do we add? Two bromines. And how do they add? Like anti. So if one's on a wedge, the other's on a dash. So that's all written down there. And again, if you don't have this down 100%, that's OK, as long as you kind of have an idea at this point. And we did one more here. BR2 with water, what does that add across the double bond? BR and OH. The OH will go where? The one with the most branches or the least branches? Most branches. And how do they add? Uh, you know, like sin or anti? Anti. Almost all of them will add anti. Occasionally, see, we have a, few, a, a couple of them that will add sin. And that was it for the review. We'll go over those again. And then the ones that have mechanisms by them, like the M. We'll uh, go over those mechanisms one more time. And it does look like you only have one more mechanism. Okay, so we'll draw all of them out again during the review. 
Okay. Go. Now let's look at what's called a synthesis. So using the same reactions, I want you to tell me what would go over the arrow. Let's just practice a couple of these. <coughs> So you have a predict the product, which means just draw the product, which would be like this part here. You have a mechanism, which is drawing all the arrows. And then you have synthesis, which is where you tell me what goes over the arrow. So let's look at the first one. What did we add on the double bond? How did it change? The double bond's gone, right? And what did we add on there? Two bromines, so that's, what did you say? Br2. What about the next one? What did we add across there? Water, H and OH. And let's look at this. Did it add Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Anti-Makarnikov, because look, that OH did it go to the side with the most branches? No, it went to the side with the least amount of branches, so that's anti-mark. So what do you put here? The BH3, to make it anti-mark, what do we need in there? H2O2, and what do we add across? Water. And this last one's harder. So actually work in a group, pairs, by yourself, however you want, and see if you figure this out. Um, I'll give you a hint. It deals with Chapter 7 and with Chapter 8. So it takes two steps to do it.
look at this. So I told you I combined chapter 7 and chapter 8 as a hint. So chapter 7, what are you always making? A what? A double bond. Okay. How can we make a double bond? Hmm? A base, right? So we could do E1 or E2. What base do you want to put in there? So H minus, that sounds good. There's a lot of choices here. Okay, so when I put some hydroxide in there as a base, then this would be an E1 or E2. E2, so I make a double bond. Well, either one you make a double bond. And what do I, where is the double bond formed? Where that bold line is. Now, how do I go from here to here? Add water, and is water added Makarnikov or anti Makarnikov? Makarnikov. So there's two choices. What's one of them? H0 plus? Or the mercury, right? Whenever it's more than kind of one step, I usually do it like this in my head so I can see all the steps. You can technically list them out right here, kind of like we did here. Notice, is this a mechanism? No. <laughs> did I show, you know, the, the hydroxide taking off a hydrogen and then the bromine leaving? Did I show any of that? No. All I'm telling you is what goes over the arrow, right? Now, this just happens to be in two steps, okay? But all I'm doing is showing what's going over the arrow. So this is called a synthesis. This here, the point of learning all these reactions, because these are the main reactions you use in a lab to make things, okay? So what you did here to go from this reactant to this product, basically you told me the instructions, okay? Kind of like how to make cookies. First you put in this, let it go for a little while, then you put in these, one of these, and let that go a little bit more, and then you'll get your final product. So you told me, essentially, the order of how I need to put everything in there, okay, to put into the beaker. So that's what a synthesis is, is the directions of what I need to do in the lab. Predict the product is I give you the directions, you know, like here and here. I tell you what to put in the beaker, and you tell me what that makes. Okay, that's predict the product. In the mechanism, I give you everything, or more like up here, I give you everything, and you tell me how this occurs. Okay, so you draw all the arrows, everything attacking and leaving and everything. Okay, so let's learn some new reactions. Okay. Here we go. Here's our next one. Now let me draw this out. Okay, let's see if we can figure out what the product would be. <laughs> that is a double bond, not a thick bond, but a really horribly drawn double one. 
Palladium is a catalyst. If you have a catalyst that just helps your reaction go, it's not actually in your product. So knowing that palladium is your catalyst, what's over the arrow? Two hydrogens. So what do you think goes across the double bond? Two hydrogens. Now I'm not going to draw them. Well, I might in a minute. But when I do this, I'm going to add hydrogens. Can hydrogens be hidden? Yes. Now what did I just do? I had a double bond. Now I add two hydrogens. Is it there? No. <laughs> I drew that that's the product. Is there a double bond on there? No, because I added two extra hydrogens to get rid of the double bond. So this is a way to go from an alkene to, what is this? An alkane. Now I'll draw the two hydrogens now. There's other hydrogens there, but those are the ones we added. Now how this works, let me show you the picture. Oh great, it's not on there. Okay, so let me describe the picture. Basically, uh, the palladium is just, it's metal. And what you do is you expose the palladium to hydrogen gas, you know, for maybe an hour or so. And it's going to make these hydrogen bonds like this, just sticking out. Now what happens, this is kind of like an assembly line. The double bond, I put it right here, will come over here and grab two hydrogens and leave as a single bond. You know, another double bond will come down here, grab two hydrogens and leave. Okay? Now, do you see that it's adding hydrogens on the same side? They're both pointing right there? Because if one was pointing out, the other was pointing down, is that double bond there to pick it up? No. So they're both going to be pointing in the same direction. So how do you think these add? Sin. There's not a mechanism for this one, because literally what it does is this. I'm not going to make you draw pictures or anything. But all this does, H2, so you're adding your two hydrogens. Palladium is your catalyst. And it adds two hydrogens sin. So you're from an alkene to an alkane. All right, now this next. Next one we're going to actually skip, because I only want to go over the ones that are more important. So skip this. This one. So it's addition of carbenes, Simmons Smith, uh, stereo specificity, carbene examples and start here on epoxide. Okay, so this one's not as easy to predict like the other ones. Let me show you what an epoxide is. So you see you start off with a double bond, an alkene, and what you end up adding on here, do you see it's like a triangle with an oxygen, kind of like we had like with the bromine in our mechanism? Okay, so this is sort of a triangle oxygen, if you want, and that, this is called an epoxide. So it's a functional group. And organic, too, will have part of a chapter over epoxides. What you have is an epoxy acid. That's where epoxide comes in. And it's going to react with it. Okay, so an epoxide. So we have something like this. 
And an epoxy acid, the generic formula is this. Now notice on the structure, what do I have a lot of on there? Oxygens, and that's why we actually end up adding oxygen. Okay, so how to predict this, you'll notice it has, they always have three oxygens like that. That's how you can, like, notice them. Sometimes, what I usually end up putting over the arrow is MCPBA, which is a proxy acid. It stands for, I'm not going to make you memorize this, but a lot of people ask when I <laughs> put that on there. It's meta- Fluoro peroxy benzoic acid or MCPBA. Now, what does that look like? Notice, how many oxygens do I have right here? The three, so that makes it a peroxy acid. A peroxide is two hydrogens bonded together. So do you see I have two, uh, not two hydrogens, two oxygens bonded together. So do you, you see right here two oxygens? So that's where the peroxy part comes in. And then the acid, a carboxylic acid is a generic functional group that looks like this. So you see C double bond O, OH. Do you see how you kind of see that here? C double bond O, OH. So this is a carboxylic acid. And then a peroxide always has two oxygens bonded together, so you see it's kind of the combination of both of them. Do you see sort of the carboxylic acid right here, C double one O, OH? But in there we have the two oxygens bonded together. Anyway, so that's what makes it a peroxy acid. Now all you have to do when you're drawing the product here, let me bring it over here. So you see, here's my double bond. Here's my peroxy acid. Now I'm going to draw the carbon structure just like it was. You see, up, down, up, up, down, up. And then what does the epoxide look like? The triangle with what atom? Oxygen. So right where the double bond was, you put your epoxide. Now let me show you. This again is not a mechanism you need to know. So let me see if it has it on here so you can see kind of what's going on. Yeah, here it is. So you see here, here's my C double bond O, 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 H. So this is my peroxy acid. Now remember, when we had, we formed the triangle with the bromine, what happened? The double bond attacked the bromine, right? And at the same time, bromine attack the double bond. So do you see right here, the double bond attacks oxygen, and at the same time, oxygen comes back and attacks the double bond. Do you see that right there? Okay, and the rest of this, do you see how this double bond is going to take off that hydrogen? Okay, and this bond here moves. Anyway, so it basically, it rearranges itself so everything else leaves. So when this oxygen um, is attacking the double bond, the double bond's attacking the oxygen. So right here, the rest of the structure rearranges so it leaves. So then what are you left with? Just that oxygen, right? Okay, and that's what happens. So there's a lot going on with the OH oxygen. 
Then everything else rearranges, so it's like, I, I don't want any part of this, and leaves, okay? So that's kind of what goes on, so you have an idea uh, what the mechanism looks like. But all you need to know is that if you have, and usually what I use is MCPBA, that is your peroxy acid that I pretty much always use. If you see MCPBA, what do you put in place of the double bond? The oxygen, the epoxide, right? So we've learned two reactions today. H2 with palladium, what does that put across the double bond? Two hydrogens and they add syn. And then a proxy acid like MCPBA will put what on a double bond? Oxygen epoxide. One thing to know about this, so do you see here, this is MCPBA, your proxy acid, so your three oxygens there. And so I would put my um, epoxide right here, right? right where the double bond is. Now what happens, do you see that these CH3s, how are they both pointing? Up, so that would be a cis. Now do you see in the final product, they're both still pointing up. Now over here, how are they? Trans, and in the product, they're trans. So don't change anything. You draw the structure exactly how it is and just put your epoxide. Now the epoxide, the oxygen here can be pointing up or down. That doesn't matter, okay? Just keep like your methyls or whatever in the same direction. So if you have That's a double bond. Now all you do, draw, do you see, just draw the structure exactly how you see it. Minus the double bond. So do you see that, is that exactly how you see it? Yeah, and the double bond was right here, right? And now what am I going to put there? The oxygen. Now again, you can have that pointing up or down, that doesn't matter, but just keep the, the main structure of the carbon backbone the same. Okay. Now there's a reaction you can do with this. It's the ring opening of an epoxide. So remember when we looked at three-membered rings, um, I don't know, like chapter three or four? Were those very stable? No. They wanted to open up. Remember, I tried to even make one, and it was hard to even make it with the model kit because it kept trying to just open up. So epoxides do exist in nature, okay? but they are reactive. So if a nucleophile comes in, it's, it's going to react right away. So the one we're going to be looking at is water. So if I have my epoxide here, and I have water as my nucleophile, Okay, so do you see, where's the, there's two electrophilic carbons, technically. Well, where are they? The ones where the oxygen is connected. So if you want to find your electrophilic carbon, it's always where your electronegative atom is. Okay, so where it's attached. Okay, so that's the reactive carbon, because if you look, let's say across this bond right here, Oxygen would be a partial negative or positive compared to carbon? Partial negative, right? And then this carbon then would be partial positive. So it has a partial positive, so it's reactive. So what happens here, we have this oxygen, and let me show you the final product. Okay. So this is my final product. Think about this. Eight, water doesn't, it never adds as water. It always adds as 
OH. Okay, so let's, so let's make a bond right there because that's our partial positive. Now, I know that's partial positive, but is there actually a full charge on there? No, this is a partial charge. Let me get rid of this so you don't think it's a charge. So it's just neutral, so does it want another bond? No, so what happens? This one will break open. So I now have O, H, H with a positive charge. Now when this breaks open, it now has a negative charge there. So let's look about what we just did. So do you see that water came and bonded to that carbon? So that's water bonded to that carbon. Okay? And then this bond broke. And when I show that arrow, what did it do to that oxygen? What did it add? Well, lone pair, and that's all it got the negative charge. Okay, so, and it broke, so when it breaks, this bond is gone. Do you see it was bonded like that, right? Now that bond is broken, so it's just connected there. Now let's look at our final product. We're almost there, right? Is this water? Does that have two hydrogens? No, right? It wants to lose one. Now, what about up here? It has one hydrogen. Does this have a hydrogen? No. So what do you think happens? Yeah, this one's just going to grab that hydrogen off and leave its electrons as a lone pair to make the final product. Now, when they add the OHs, do you see that this epoxide is pointing, let's say, up. And did you see the water came in from the bottom? So then they add, how do, what do we say this is? Anti. And that's the last mechanism you have to actually know, this one right here. For this exam, anyway. It can add on the top, so this one's on the top and that one is shown on the bottom. But they're always opposite of each other. Okay, so if you're just doing the, fun, let's just predict the product. So here's the mechanism, but if we have, predict the product. I have an epoxide, so this is the only one that doesn't actually start with a double bond. And I put water in there. What happens in the final product? What do I put on there? Two OHs, and how do they add? Anti. Do you know what an OH is called? Alcohol. And how many do we have? Two. So you call this a diol. Yeah, this is well. This is the same one, anti-diol. So if we can do an anti-diol, what do you think the other, the next thing will be? Syndiol. This one starts with a double bond. And you put osmium tetraoxide in there. Now again, what do we have a lot of over the arrow? Oxygen. So we're probably going to add oxygen. Now I already told you this is going to be, if this is a transdial, then this is your the syndial. So what do you think the product will be? What are we adding? Two OHs, and they're going to be on the same side.
Okay, so let's review what we've done so far. <sighs> okay, we've added H. Huh? Oh, S. So when we add H2 and your palladium catalyst, what does that add over the double bond? Two hydrogens. When I add, I have a double bond and I put MCPBA over the arrow, what do you make? The, it's with the, the epoxide, so it's that triangle oxygen. When I react that epoxide with water, what do I get? Two OHs and they're the, the trans ions. And then when I add, react a double bond with osmium tetraoxide, OSO4, what does that make? Sendiol. We just have two more reactions and they're very, very similar. And then we're done. <laughs> so these are a little bit more fun, I think. Okay, so I'm going to do them together so it's kind of like one reaction. That's ozone, O3, S, CH32, and KMNO4. Okay, so my professor taught me as good surgeon, bad surgeon, okay? So what does a surgeon do? Cuts, right? Now, what's the main functional group we've been talking about in Chapter 8? Not an oxygen. We can add an oxygen on there, but what do we always start with? A double bond? Yes. <laughs> so our starting material is a double bond. So what do you think we're going to cut? The double bond, okay? So a surgeon cuts the double bond, and that's what it's going to do. We're going to literally cut it in half. So let me cut this in half. It looks something like that, right? If I, I just cut it down the middle. Now, when you do this, though, you can't just leave your wound open. You have to, like, bandage it, right? Now, what do we have a lot of up here? Oxygen. So what do you think we bandage it with? Oxygen. So we're going <coughs> to, each end, we're going to put an oxygen. And that's your product there. Cut your double bond, add oxygen. So this one's a good surgeon. Now the bad surgeon, which is the bottom one, not only cuts the double bond, but ends up cutting your hydrogen feet. So let's put in our hidden hydrogens. So again, what does a surgeon do? Cuts. So just like the one we did before, we're going to cut the double bond. And what did we cap each end with? Oxygen. And these aren't bonded together. These are just, you know, two different products. They're cut in half. Okay, now... For it. Now, this gives you the same product so far, okay? But we have to go one step further. We have to cut off our feet, okay? 
Now cut off our hydrogen feet. Now what do we always cap it with? Oxygen. And to actually to neutralize it, it ends up being OH. So it turns our hydrogens into alcohols. Now it's just the hydrogens coming off the double bond. See, this is a CH3, right? Now did I add three OHs over here? No. So only the hydrogens that are directly coming off the double bond. Now let's say this one didn't have a hydrogen there. Let's say it had um, this. That's a double bond. It keeps getting worse. <laughs> Okay, so this is the bad surgeon. So what do we do? Cut. And what do we cap it with? Oxygen. And what do we do with our hydrogens? Make them the OH. So there's a hidden hydrogen right here. Is there one over here? No. So only this side will have OH. Okay, those are all of the reactions in Chapter 8. We'll review them again here in a minute for the review. And again, the, the best way you can do this, and I have um, online, you know, that list of all of the reactions. So you have all of them listed on one page, okay? Print that off. And I think, do I have the mechanisms on there too? I even have the mechanisms drawn out for you, okay? I couldn't have made it any easier, all right? So print those out and study those. That's literally what you need to know for the exam or for chapter 8, okay? Um, I mean, think about, I know it seems like a lot, but let's compare this to A and P, okay? I, we might have, I don't know, 10 reactions, okay? And I have them all listed on one page. Is that anything compared to one A and P test? Even a fraction of an A and P test? No. So think of it that way. Don't get too overwhelmed. Uh, there is, I mean, there's some logic to it, you know, knowing when something will attack, when something will leave, you know, and that'll just come with time. But part of it, it literally is memorization, some of it. You know, we can't get around that completely. So just make your note cards. And and get these down forwards and backwards, you know, in between the games, you know, when you have a commercial break, you know, get your cards out, you know. I mean, whatever you need to do, make sure you make time for that. Um, I would say if you go ahead and make your cards tonight, and at, I don't know if you're like me, but if whenever I write something down, I tend to remember it. Not always, but I have a better chance of remembering it. So if you make your note cards, you'll probably already have them, or mostly down anyways. And then just keep going over them a few times every day. And before you know it, Monday's going to come around. And I mean, it's going to be like nothing, OK? So remember to study. Don't put studying off. You will end up hating yourself and me, OK? <laughs> I don't want you to hate anybody. So just do a little bit at a time. All right, so let's take a break, and then we'll start the review.
All right, let's go ahead and start up. Uh, let's review through chapter seven first, and then we'll do those problems. All right, the first thing would be degrees of unsaturation. So let's do one. All right, calculate the degrees of unsaturation in that compound. <laughs> I know, it's a Thursday. I'm asking way too much. <laughs> <laughs> Plus chapter seven. <laughs> nope. Two times number carbons plus two minus H plus halogen minus nitrogen divided by two. Okay, so we have here two times what? Six, which is 12 plus two. How many hydrogens? Any halogens? Nitrogens? One, so seven minus one? Six. 14 minus six? Eight. Eight divided by two? Four. So make sure you can calculate that. What does it mean? How many uh, degrees of unsaturation for a single bond or a ring? Two hydrogens or one degree of unsaturation. And what about for a triple bond? Two degrees of unsaturation. Okay, so basically it's a way of telling you how many hydrogens you're missing. Okay, uh, naming. Name these two. So how many carbons in the longest chain here? Six. And what do we name that? Hexene. Where is the double bond? Two. And fluoro. And where is it located? Four. Can we say cis, trans, E, or Z? Yes. Trans, can you see it's going down, it's going up. Trans. Or you could have put E. What about the next one? Hexene. Two, fluoro again, and where is fluoro this time? Two, 
And you say Z. Let's check him. <laughs> so here and here coming off the double. So a methyl and a fluorine. Which one's a higher priority? Fluorine, number one. And here I have a chain there. And then what's down here not shown? Hydrogen. So which one's higher? The chain. So one and one. What do we get? Z. Let's draw one. Draw one in the name. <laughs> okay. Z can go there or at the front. <laughs> So what is heptene? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's the double bond? Two. And we'll worry about Z in a minute. So one, two. And then methyl is at three. Okay, let's see what we have drawn here. Let's see if we did the E or the Z. Okay. On this side, I have a methyl, and what's hidden here? H. Which one's higher? The methyl. Then over here, I have this long chain, and then I have methyl. What's a higher priority? Long chain. So what did I draw? E. Is that what I want? No. So what can I do? I can move that one up, right? Because if I have this going up, they're all in the same one. So. We were going up and draw everything else the same. So all I did is I moved this methyl from pointing down to now pointing up. So you see now my priorities are one and one. Hmm? You can add some dashes and wedges if you want. All right, let's look at stability. Is it more stable to have more branches or less branches? More branches. And then let's also look at cis-trans. We didn't talk about this that much. So that one's trans, that one's cis. Now, they have the same amount of branches, right? So the next thing you usually look at is crowding. Which one looks more crowded? The cis. So which one do you think is more stable? The trans. So the trans is always more stable than the cis, just due to slight crowding. Right? E2, okay. Draw the products for both of those.
So these are E's, so what do you always form? Double bonds. Okay, what product would form on the first one? Inside stuff, and how do you know? Small base. Okay, now this is my leaving group, so that's one side of the double bond. The other side will be a neighboring carbon. So I can go towards the methyl, a methyl, or an ethyl. Towards the ethyl. So you're always going to go towards the longest and the one with the most branching. So what about the bottom one? This is yeah, bulky. So which one is this? Hoffman. Now where will the double bond go? Towards one of the methyls. And you can choose either one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to choose the top one. You could have had your double bond going down. Let's draw the mechanism for the top one, just to make sure we have that. So E2, does everything happen at once or one step at a time? Everything happens at once. So what does this base want to take off? Not a bromine. Hydrogen. Which hydrogen? The bromine's your leaving group. So where else did we make the double bond? the neighboring carbon. That's where you take your hydrogen off. So you have a hidden hydrogen there. Oxygen grabs it off. It's always your neighboring hydrogen. And then what does hydrogen do? Leave its electrons and then bromine leaves. That is the E2 mechanism. Also with E2, we need to do like the cyclohexane analysis. It's only where the double bond would form. So does it like when they're anti or cis or trans? Anti, right? They like them opposite of each other. So let's look. My leaving group is what? Chlorine, and it's on what? A dash. So that means I'd want my hydrogen on a wedge. Okay? This is methyl. Is this a hydrogen? No, it's on a dash, so the hidden hydrogen would be on a wedge. 
And then over here, this is on a wedge, right? So my hidden hydrogen would be on a dash. So which one would work? Where would you form the double bond? Towards the top or the bottom? The top, because I have a dash and hydrogen wedge. Sarah, the chlorine and that hydrogen both leave in your product. All right, and then the last concept in Chapter 7 is E1 dehydration. Let's both predict the product and draw the mechanism. So for E1, do we have to worry about Zaitsev and Hoffman? No. It's always Zaitsev. Okay, so what's my leaving group? OH. And so where will I form my double bond? To the left. Now let's actually show this mechanism. Is OH a good leaving group like that? No. What is it going to grab? A hydrogen. All right, not from there. Here. So when you grab a hydrogen from here, H3 O plus becomes H2O. And this OH on here is now H2O. All right, now from this point on, it's your regular E1 mechanism. Okay, so let's see here. What's my first step in an E1. Leaving group leaves. Which is water. And what's on that carbon? Carbocation. All right. What happens in the next step? You form a double bond, how? Take off a hydrogen, which one? The one to the left. Never where the positive is. So I'm going to use, I can use this water or that water, it doesn't matter. Take off a hydrogen, and hydrogen does what? Leave its electrons as a double bond. Okay, so let's look at those sapling questions and see if we can figure those out. So that's pretty much all the material for Chapter 7. Everybody have that down? Okay. It was, I think, did you say 10 through 13?
Let's look at them. Draw the major organic product formed in this reaction. Okay, so chapter 7, pretty much you're going to have an E1 or an E2. So we need to decide, is this E1 or E2? E2, why? There's a negative in there. Then you need to decide, is this bulky or not bulky? Not bulky. Okay, what is my leaving group? Br. So, so here's my leaving group. Now, where will I form my double bond? Towards methyl, methyl, or ethyl? Ethyl. And that's the product. Does that make sense? So your bromine is gone, and your double bond is right there. Does that make sense? How? Why? Any questions? Okay, so let's look at... It just wants your organic product. It's there. I mean, it's as Br minus, um, but it only wants your organic product, so you don't have to worry about it. Does that make sense? Uh, let's look at 11. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's our, our starting material, DMSOSIA solvent, so sodium methoxide, so that's NaOCH3, so just OCH3, is that bulky or small? Small, okay, so here's my product here, or my, my, product, my reactant, I have a small one. So is that going to be Zeitseff or Hoffman? Zeitseff. So here's my leaving group. It can go towards methyl, methyl, or ring. The ring. So out of A, B, C, D, E, F, which one has the double bond towards the ring? C. And then what about 2? So this is a tert um, butoxide. So this is uh, three carbons branching off. So that's bulky. So where would the bulky one go towards? The methyl. Where does it have the double bond towards the methyl? E. So those are the, the answers there. So it's a good review of Zaitsev versus Hoffman. 12. Okay, so this is drawn as a cyclohexane, but drawn in a chair. Okay, so how, really you just need to look at how it's pointing, up or down, because we want them trans, right, when they leave. Chlorine is your leaving group. How is it pointing? Up. So I need my hydro hydrogen to be pointing down, okay? So if I go, I can make a double bond from here to here. Now let's look. Is my hydrogen in the correct position? No, because it's pointing up. Now, so now let's look at the other neighboring carbon. So here to here. Do I have a hydrogen pointing down? Yes. So all you need to do is put the double bond right there. Now you don't have to actually draw it in a chair. You can draw it, let me show you, in a ring. Okay, and do we ever show the hydrogens? No, I mean, who does that? <laughs> here, here, because that's that CH2CH3. So that was CH2CH3. That's where the chlorine was. So where's my double bond? Down right there. Like that. And you could just draw it like that. Okay, you don't have to draw it as a... Re a a chair and then put your hydrogens in axial equatorial. You can draw it flat, planar. And then the last one here.
Okay, one propanol is heated with an acid. Your acid is going to be H3 plus. So what's propanol? Prop is how many carbons? Three. And then what do you think all is? OH. And then we're heating in the presence of this acid. So what will that do? It turns this into water, right? And it leaves. And then what do I do? What do I form in the end? Double bond. And that and they on this one, if I remember correctly, they want you to actually put your leaving group. So we just said it. What is your leaving group? H2O. Water. So if you did miss it, it could be because you're just missing water. Or you could have done something completely wrong. But if you kept getting this and you didn't know what you were doing, you might have just been missing water. So any questions about Chapter 7? Okay, let's move on to Chapter 8. And I think what we'll do with Chapter 8, we'll list out the reactions, I like a predict the product, we'll practice some synthesis, and then we'll rewrite the mechanism. Okay? Okay. I'm going to be a little lazy and take a shortcut here. That's my starting with, oh, you can't see that. Here. Okay, let's look at the first one. 
What are we adding over the double bond? Here? What are we adding there? HBr? Is that Makarovnikov or anti Makarovnikov? Anti. So where will the bromine go? Where? Top or bottom? The, the top would be a Makarnikov, so the bottom. Their anti mark goes to the side with the least branching. What does KMNO4 do? It cuts it, so let's cut this. Right? Or, no? What do I cap it with? Oxygen. And do I do anything with my hydrogen feet? Yes, yeah, the bad one. Oh, they turn into OH. How many hidden hydrogens do I have? Do I have to care about? Just one? Where? At the bottom. Uh, give you a second. What does H3O plus add on there? H and OH, Makarnikov or anti? Smart. So the OH will go top or bottom? Top. All right, let's look at the next one. What does MCPBA do? Makes the epoxide. And then when I react the epoxide with water, what does that do? Two OHs, are they trans? Yes. So in the end, You get that. Mm -hmm. So anytime you see MCPBA with water, you actually end up getting your trans dials. There's that extra step there. What about HCl? What am I adding? H and Cl. Makarovnikov or anti-Makarovnikov? Makarovnikov. So the Cl will go top or the bottom? Top. What about the next one? What does this add? OH? Makarnikov or anti Makarnikov? Makarnikov, because there's no peroxide, so the OH will go the top, right? And, the, and then go ahead with the hydrogen on there. How do they add? Anti, yeah. I mean, they're going to add opposites. We're looking at wedges and dashes.
What about ozone? What does that do? Cuts it. Do I do anything with my hydrogen feet? And what do I cap with? Oxygen. And because I'm running around out of room over here, let me draw this over there. So what does BH3 peroxide and water do? What does it add? Water. Makarnikov or anti-Makarnikov? Anti. So then the OH will go the bottom. So anti mark. And how does this add? Sin. What about hydrogen with palladium? Two H's? And how do they add? Sin? What about MCPBA? It makes the epoxide. And what about osmium tetraoxide? How many oxygens? Two. And how do they add? So, so you have your two alcohols. And they're going to add cis. This is your cis diols. And up there is your, you can't see it, trans. There's two, I just realized I forgot. What does BR2 add? Two bromines, and they add how? Sin or anti? Anti. And BR2 with water, what does that add? A bromine and a OH. Where does the OH go? The top. And how do they add? Anti. All right, so let's take a break from this for a minute, and y'all have to review me. So I'll give you, and I like 
How much time do you think you need? Like 10 minutes or so? I don't know. An hour. <laughs> um, and then we'll come back, or you'll stay in here, but I'll come back and review the rest of the stuff. So who wants to be in charge of this? <laughs> okay, so all your, I mean, I'm sure you've done these before. Today? <laughs> all right, I will be back in about 10 minutes, and we'll finish the review.
All right. Let's go ahead and finish up the review. So write these down, these synthesis, and see if you can figure out what goes over the arrow. So kind of work together and figure those out.
Okay, now let's look at the next one. Just like the one above, what will the double bond grab? Hydrogen. So H3O plus becomes H2O. And where does that hydrogen add? The end, yeah, the least substituted. Because this is a McCarmichael. Then you'll have your carbocation here. Okay, let's look at the product. What are we missing? OH, right? And where does that come from? Water. So let's make a bond where that carbocation is. Okay, now, does it look exactly like the product yet? No, what is, what's wrong with it, or what do we need to change? Take off a hydrogen with what? Magic water. So realize how the, the first two we did are very similar. Both of them grabbed a hydrogen first, then the nucleophile made a bond to that positive charge. You see this case chlorine, in this case water. And on that one you're done. And this one, the only last thing it's do is take off a hydrogen. But the first two steps are exactly the same. Double bond attacks the hydrogen, nucleophile attacks that positive charge. Okay, let's look at the bottom one. What happens here? First up. Grabs a bromine and then Bromine also attacks the double bond, and the other one just leaves. So when this bromine's bonded, what will it look like? A, a triangle, right? Are we at the product yet? No. What do we need to do? Add the other bromine. You can do it to either side. So let's say we do it to that side, and then what happens to this bond? It breaks and moves on to bromine, the other bromine, giving you your final product. Don't worry, we're not done yet. I think we have three more. Everybody done with this page? Okay. Nope, two more.
Okay, what does the double bond make a bond to? Bromine. And at the same time, bromine makes a bond to the double bond. Just like the one we just did. So then what does the bromine look like? Triangle. What do we need to do to get to the final product? What needs to attack? Water, because you see we need to put an OH on there. So let's make the water, make a bond where? Let's say top or bottom? The bottom. Which causes this bond to, to break and move over. Okay, what do I need to do for the final step? Take off a hydrogen, and yeah, you can just use bromine over here. Since the OH adds second, you don't actually form a carbocation, but how this works is almost like if you formed a carbocation, because it's Makarnikov, where would be the most stable position? There or there? And it would have been there, and that's, so that's where the water will add. It's going to add to the most stable position for a carbocation, even though you don't form one. Yes? No, you don't have, I, no, I mean, you will, what I wrote in black, that's what you would get. So you don't have to write your extra products. Just if you use it, like over here with the bromine, we use that, right? You don't have to show the H bar at the end. That's just so you could see it went somewhere. Yeah, only, the only ones you have to show are the ones you use. No, you don't have to have that. I wouldn't take off of that. Okay, let's look at our last one. Okay, so water. Too many. Is going to make a bond <coughs> where? It doesn't matter, but you only have two choices one of the epoxide positions. So let's say it goes here. So what happens to that bond there? It's going to open up. What do I need to do to get to my final product? Yeah, grab 
this oxygen will grab that hydrogen. And then you're there. I know they're pointing in different directions than over here, but that doesn't matter. Do you see that they're pointing opposite? Opposite. These are single bonds, so they're always rotating, so as long as they're pointing opposite. And once you get that down, that is, those are all the mechanisms for Chapter 8 possible that I could put on the exam. Chapter 8 would be like predict the product, synthesis, or mechanism. Yes. 